Well, we have our, the great Katie Finney. She's going to be directing us, letting us talk, muting us at times. So, yeah. Although I don't actually have that power. Maria has the power to mute So, as the host. But yeah, I'll, um, I'll be guiding us towards seven o'clock. Uh, yeah, so I... Um, I won't make the assumption you know all about Zoom, so I'll run really quickly through how we'll run this session and how we'll use Zoom. So yeah, welcome. Uh, so a few bits on Zoom. As Maria said, we're recording. And as Gabriella said, it will be shared. So do bear that in mind. And after we've shared a little bit about uh, the topic of avoiding divorce during coronavirus pandemic, We'd love to hear from you, to hear your thoughts, maybe have a discussion or, or address any questions that might have come up. So if you would like to speak, do put your hand up either physically or using the hand up option. Um, just do you both know how to do the hand up, pressing the button? Great, okay, lovely. Um, you, you can have us on gallery view or speaker view. So speaker view is when the person speaking is really big. Gallery view is where you get to see everybody. So take a pick in the top right hand corner. Um, yeah, and we're heading certainly here in the UK and Spain towards the end of the day. It's bright and early in the USA where Gabriella is at 10 a.m. But you might be feeling a little bit tired for whatever reason. Um, so we're, we're asking for as much attention as you can give and, and yeah, listening is always helpful um, with other devices, put to one side if you can. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Katie, one third of Amity with Maria and Meta the dog. Um, so yeah, with um, Amity, what Maria and I do is work with groups and individuals really to support them to make, take positive action for themselves and their communities. And we had the pleasure of, um, well, intending to work alongside Gabriella uh, a couple of years ago. And we did the first of our large programs, which is called a community leaders program, where we work with the local council and residents in communities to um, support them to develop new projects and work together effectively. And, Gabriella's history and community development really drew us to having her alongside us as a mentor. And we entered the first session with her with that in mind and then pivoted majorly because it coincided with a bit of a disastrous time in Maria and my personal relationship because we're partners in life and in business. And so that experience brought us together. And I think I, I wrote a note about this webinar and said that um, Gabriella was really influential, actually, in, in for me in the return to being back together for Maria and I. So it seemed appropriate we'd be kind of joining together again, both given our interest in community development, but specifically for this topic, the um, the journey we went on together in um, uh, mine and Maria's relationship. So yeah, Gabriella. Um, I think he's de has dedicated much of her life to that community development, but also to serving others by helping them to um, discover the genius and well-being at our core. So between us, we hope to explore some of that this evening. So, when we were preparing for this webinar, we thought, how can we talk about some of the experiences we have in a relationship and we came up with this idea that we can in, in relationships as in life have this experience of being in in either a vicious circle really caught up in a vicious circle or a virtuous circle and hopefully the the two words described in those circles give you a sense of um, the experience we might have in each of those and we're gonna um talk hello here we go. Oh, sorry, distracting me. You can't compete with this beautiful dog. Uh, so what's your dog's name? He's called Skipper. 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 Oh, oh, Skipper. That's a distract you with him. Oh, oh that's cool. It's a beautiful distraction. Um, yeah, so we're going to explore those circles, and, and we're naturally 
in both of those circles. So we're not suggesting it's good or bad to be in either of those circles, just the, um, knowing about those circles and what can keep us caught up in them can be very helpful. So I'm going to pass over to Maria to say something, if you like, Maria. Yeah, well, um, when we were talking about these two circles, we we were saying what is one thing that we could share of each of the circles that that could be helpful, right? In this time that we are living. Uh, so I'll start with the vicious circle then. <laughs> uh, so one thing that I've noticed uh, that gets in the way of a harmonious relationship is when I make meaning of Katie's behavior. It could be her behavior or her mood or what she says. Uh, so uh, I will make meaning of it and then uh, I'll be bothered about the behavior and my listening will drop and I notice myself getting judgmental and what can happen is uh, like for example, I'm going to give a recent example, which might not be the best example, but it's uh, just to illustrate a little bit. So in, in Spain, we went into lockdown two weeks ago and the UK was not in lockdown. And Katie called me and she said, oh, I'm on my way to this big event full of people. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah, you know, I'm going to this event. And I, I, I was telling her, but Katie, how can you go to an event? You should be at home. You should reduce your contact with people. You should be self-isolating. And she was like, yeah, but the UK, UK government has not tell us to stay at home. So I don't know what to do. Uh, so because I was making meaning of her behavior, I stopped listening, right? And I felt myself being very judgmental. And then at that moment, I thought, okay, I need to step back and listen again. So I asked her again, like, what do you mean? Like, why is this a good idea? And she shared with me the thinking behind why she was going to support this event. And, you know, and, and we arrived to, to a place where I was like, okay, right? She has her own wisdom. I don't have to tell her what to do. She can do whatever she wants to do. Uh, in the past, that would, that would not, not be the case. In the past, I would take in, especially Katie's moods, as something personal. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to get down and deep here, Katie. <laughs> no, but no, we all have moods, right? But I will take in them as something personal. I will make meaning of them. I will be judgmental. And then I will indulge that bothersome thinking and stay in that for longer than needed, that, that it needed to be. So we are not saying that being in the vicious circle is wrong. However, what happens is that your listening it gets affected. You don't see us clearly. You are reactive. Um, it suddenly, it seems like there's a problem with the, with the partner or, or with yourself or with the relationship, and there's something to fix and uh, there's something wrong, right? So that is what, this is one thing that we wanted to share about the vicious circle. Like what happens when we make meaning out of what our partner does or says or, or their ideology or anything that they are presenting. And yeah, do you, do you two want to add anything about about the vicious circle, Gabriela or Katie or anyone else? You know, I think for me, I sometimes I can start like discerning, oh, here I go, here I go, here I go. Sometimes, you know, and sometimes actually <laughs> I have like removed myself 
including going to the bathroom, going for a walk, you know, or whatever I can do to think of in the moment. But sometimes I'm in the middle of this vicious, intense, uh, what it feels like to me as very real experience. And I have no discernment or no distance at all. You know, I just, I just feel like I'm cut, almost like in a storm. Um, and one of the things that it's been helpful for me is to identify or discern what are some of my personal feelings that I experience during this time. And so one of the things that I've noticed is I get very righteous. I get very stubborn. And I feel extremely compelled to share my opinion. You know, so I just, I just, sometimes I can tell and sometimes I just get caught in it. Um, What has been helpful, intensity of my feelings when I'm in the vicious circle. That's been super helpful. What it has been interesting is to experience my relationship in the vicious circle because it, it looks like it's doomed. It looks like it's difficult. It looks like it's hard, right? Um, when I have come out of it a little bit, the same person, the same relationship, my lovely husband, all of a sudden starts appearing. But one of the things that I've noticed, you know, when you were talking, Maria, about taking mood seriously, I notice I have a tendency to take Will's, um, moodiness to heart like i have to fix his moodiness he's in a low mood he's not feeling well what can i do right so i notice it's like oh he's in a low mood let me go help and then if i can't help then i'm like ah, damn, he's always in a low mood you know he really would be it would be very beneficial if he was not in a low mood so then i tell him you know, you really need to try to understand that you're in a low mood because that would be really helpful to you if you start identifying that. Well, how do you think that goes? <laughs> Super bad. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting. I think when you're in a relationship, when you're in a partnership, whether it's your, your loved one, you know, like your, your partner, your life partner, your wife, your husband, or just your family, it's really interesting, or even yourself, the relationship within yourself, it's really interesting to start noticing these moments that we're calling circles. It's interesting to start kind of like paying attention to your feeling state. And what has been helpful for me is to try to remember that the way that I'm seeing myself in this moment, the way that I'm seeing my partner in this moment, the way that I'm seeing my marriage in this moment or my relationship is not factual. You know? So it's just fascinating how under the vicious circle, what we're calling the vicious circle, I can actually start experiencing feelings of discomfort, or um, upset or dislike, right? I don't even have to see him. I don't even have to be like physically in the room. I can be driving away and I can get into this kind of circular thinking and I'm experiencing completely the opposite as when I'm in the virtuous circle. And what I realized when we were preparing is that when we're in the vicious circle, we're not experiencing our partners or our loved ones. 
we're experiencing our judgment and our thinking. So that was really humbling to realize that I'm not even seeing my, like my beautiful husband in the moment. I'm just seeing the thought that's currently um, present for me. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing my mood. I'm experiencing my upset. So that was really nice. It was really nice because I was like, huh, there are times where I, I can see the beauty of my husband and there are times where I just, the only thing that I can see is the, the viciousness of my thinking in the moment, right? And that can happen with our kids and that can happen with our bosses and that can happen. Hopeful, it was very hopeful to start noticing that the only thing that's happening in this moment is that I'm just seeing my opinions as a fact and not the people that I love. So I just wanted to say that because that was really, it's been, it saved my life actually, it saved my relationship. So, Haiti. Yeah, uh, what to add? Um, I, I, I think I, I noticed today how very quickly when I get caught up in a vicious circle, um, how very quickly whatever it is I've given meaning that to that has usually created a problem. So the meaning I apply is usually for me is is there's a problem. So and and one recurring theme for me is Maria being late. And they, they, it's not just Maria actually, it's any anyone. But <laughs> but I, I held a lot of meaning associated with people being late. So today we had a, a call scheduled this afternoon and I was like, oh, we've had the whole morning to kind of do whatever we want and relax and prep and, and she can't even turn up to the meeting on time. So she's like five minutes past the time we were meant to meet and I got a message that said, I need 15 minutes. Right, so on I hop to the vicious circle. Right. And the story goes, um, okay, so Maria's late. She clearly doesn't really care about catching up with me when we're separated by lockdown, having to manage a long distance relationship. And, you know, this piece of work we're meant to be doing is never going to happen if we don't have time to do it. She's so disrespectful because she knows how I feel about her being late at this site. So, so not only now does she not care, but she's disrespectful. So if she doesn't care and she's disrespectful, there's a critical problem in our relationship. So all of a sudden, we're in crisis. This is all going on for me, whilst I'm sitting there waiting for Maria to turn up to the call. And then I, I noticed, I, 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 I mean, it might be the prep for this um, call that helped. It might be having a little bit of understanding that's very helpful that I noticed how I was feeling. Um, um, my mood had completely plummeted and I'd been feeling quite good. I'd had a productive morning. I'd had a relaxed morning. I'd had a great time. I turned up on time. All was well. And suddenly I was thinking about this critical problem in our relationship. My mood had completely gone down. I was stressing about my whole afternoon being disrupted. And I noticed that. And I just, I, I took, I, would, I was able to take a step back. Kind of, and because I was aware of what was going on for me, little, uh, a little bit of space emerged. And I managed to hold that space for Maria. So instead of like taking all the space and sharing with her exactly why we have a critical problem here, I managed to ask how she was getting on. And it turned out that she'd had a really challenging morning. She's exhausted after 15 days of lockdown and dealing with those implications. And I'd been to and from the hospital and ferrying food to her dad who's in hospital and was having um, a morning of really taking care of her family. And she still showed up to a call with me um, 15 minutes late. You know, I suddenly thought, well, she, she, she could have just cancelled the whole call. She, she cares enough to show up. So suddenly I was seeing who she is, which is an amazing woman who is in this challenging situation and is really rising to it. 
and and I was able to see Maria and that was a completely different experience of her and of our relationship and we were no longer um, critical. I was no longer critical, right? So the relationship was not in a critical position and I wasn't being critical. And it was very helpful to know that it was uh, possible or most likely that it was the meaning I was giving to her not turning up being late that was the problem or that was what was happening not really anything Maria was doing. I love that example Katie because when we were preparing for for this one of the things that we realized is that we are able to experience the same situation Maria being late completely different mm -hmm. and with a sense of being generous of heart mm -hmm. and kind of, kind of almost like a sense of appreciation of oh she could have canceled so we were ho so hopeful because we realized that there is something to understand about relationships that allow us to go through difficult times with a sense of kindness and generosity of heart and the mask of love, right? Because it's like if you, you put your mask of love. Um, and even the most challenging of situations can be experienced in this way. Uh, and it's that little pause that Katie was talking about, like, hmm, I'm wondering if it's me. I'm wondering if it's not so critical. That, and then all of a sudden, when you were talking, Katie, it's like, I just got the sense that, wow, and now you're able to see your dearest Maria, right? And I think there is something, there is something when we, we put forward that feeling, even if the person doesn't quite appreciate it in the moment. I think when we speak from love, you know, and when, when we are taken care of, right, when we feel secure, right, and neutral and well planted, it's most, um, most likely the moment where there is going to be that generosity of heart and love come to the surface of our relationships. I don't know if that's making sense to you guys. I love to hear from Karina or from Amy or from Maria. Love to have just a girl discussion around this. Should we all unmute? We could probably cope with five of us unmuted. What do you reckon? <laughs> Karina, I love to hear. I love to hear what's resonating about this for you, or if you have any insight about this, you know, just for relationships. Well, it definitely helps when we come from a grounded place ourselves. Because then we're not in a story and, and, and like you've mentioned, all of you've mentioned, you're just better able to listen and, and, and have better perspective. So I think that's really, really helps to check in almost to sort of calibrate where you're coming from. And, and also when you notice that you're still in that, uh, in that funny, funny, you know, like busy, <laughs> Or, or, or just stirred up space that that's not the right time if if possible to you know to address whatever's going on and just to have time to to settle first because then you know everything's much much clearer and and, and it's just interesting to notice if you still feel the same way as you did before so that's one thing i would i would say um yeah Anything else, anything that, you know, during this time, you know, you have encountered yourself. I mean, we're calling this, this you know, the vicious circle or the virtuous circle, because we just came, you know, came up with that, actually, Katie coined yeah. that. Um, I'm just wondering if, 
like even in this moment, right? There's something that you you can see that might be new. Well, what I'm seeing, I mean, I'm not actually in a relationship at the moment, but I find it fascinating and that's why I love this conversation. But just with myself and, and with my son, um, if I notice that I'm in a feeling that I don't like, um, you know, if I'm riled up or something, rather than react to it, um, but the other, the other side is, okay, so not to react to it, but also to sort of allow it as, as a feeling rather than try and fight it or, or judge myself about it, because that just seems to make it last longer. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, that's just, so it's not just the judgment of the other person, but the judgment of yourself for being in that feeling. Um, that's what I'm noticing at the moment. Um, yeah, because I know that it will pass there, but just let it be. So that's what I'm seeing at the moment. And that's been helpful to you. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's uncomfortable. And then I'm still getting used to that. <laughs> because, you know, in an ideal world, you wouldn't have all these negative feelings or, or whatever that, that crop up. And this is not just specific to relationships, but any kind of feeling that comes, um, especially in this time. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I think you're, I think you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, yeah, like the, the worst kind of disagreements or arguments I've had in relationships is always when we're both in a low place. Um, and it, on reflection now, maybe uh, if I'd had some of the arguments now, not knowing what I know, it probably would be over. Yeah. Whereas I feel like I can have an argument from a low place. It still sucks. Like it, it's not nice. It's uncomfortable. But I know that um, I know that that's what it is, and that helps a lot because I don't give. Um, I don't give value to it as much as I would have because I also think relationships are so much about ex expectations of what we think is a relationship and most of the time that's just based on our experience and who knows there's no like right or wrong relationship everyone's got their own idea and um, I do think we have a lot of Un, uh, unrealistic ideas of what a relationship can be um, and for me it's just kind of learning yeah not to put so much pressure uh, mm. on a relationship which I tr what I try to do is like what I've learned in the last like five six years is like my relationship with myself so mm. I've taken a lot of the pressure off myself um, and my expectations um so i try to apply that to the other person as well obviously it doesn't work all the time because we're not perfect um and we can't we can't really keep that level all the time um but yeah i think even even if you're both from a low coming from a low place well, when I've recognised it, the best thing I can do is I just take myself away from it. And for a while, that was seen as me shutting off. But for me, that was like my coping, because I would rather shut myself away to let it settle than do or say something that I regret. Um, yeah, so... It's, it's difficult when you bring another person into it because another person has all their whole world of experience and life and all the stuff that they're bringing and you think that your way of doing it is the best way and it's not, it's just everyone has their own way. I've learned a lot from that as well, just 
uh, everyone does different things to cope it doesn't mean it's right or wrong mm. but the I think that you have to both respect that that you have different ways of coping and that like in, in the beginning of my relationship we we struggled with like basic like because um I'd had a whole lifetime of this is how I live uh, and this is how I look after the place that I live and this is how I cook or whatever and then you bring someone who co who has all their ideas of what they think is how to do something um and because we're from two different cultures as well it can sometimes literally just be well that's what we've always done and I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't mean that that's the way to do it. So even something ridiculous like making the bed, like, I don't know if Katie <laughs> and Maria, you notice this, but Spanish people make beds differently. Like they have a sheet, they don't have a duvet. They like, it's, it's, so for me, it took a long time to adapt because, uh, yeah, it was just like, that's the way that you do it. And I was like, but this is the way that I do it. So it, it's just trying to communicate, but then also think, well, does it really matter? Mm. It's a bed, you know? Um, but then obviously that, that can apply to more, more serious things or like mm. how you cope with different things in the family or so sometimes, yeah, uh, just trying to adapt to each other is like the, the biggest thing but it's the most exciting as well because you have you're learning about a different person and like then you're opening yourself to oh there is another way to do something um let's try it that way and if I don't like it we can do something else or I don't know like I I eat different now and stuff because it, it's easier for me to adapt in some ways to her culture but sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating because I'd Sometimes I just want to have a sandwich for lunch. Like, you know, I don't want to have a big bowl of, you know, it's little things like that, but, um, yeah. You know, I mean, hi, Ana Maria, how are you? I don't know if she's locked, is that a picture? I think that might be her picture. Mm -hmm. Looks like that was her. Um, you know, you, you actually brought up a really good point, which is, as couples, we sometimes get stuck in the issue you know mm -hmm. like the bed or the sandwich or in this case um i was telling marie and katie that um i kind of got into it with my with my husband because i have a lot of training on how to put up a mask because I, I work for the, the health and hospital system so every year i had three hours every year three hours on how to put on a mask Okay, so there's like this whole entire procedure of you, you, you do it in a certain way and you take it off in a certain way. And so we have decided we were going to go to the store to get some groceries. And my husband said, well, I'm going to get a mask. And I was like, well, let me instruct you on how to put on a mask. Because actually, if you don't know how to put it on correctly, you can actually end up infecting yourself, which is what you're trying to avoid. To which he said, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm not interested in your instruction. And I said, you don't realize how important this is. So he goes, Gab, I have no interest at all in this. I'm just, this is what I'm going to do. And I got stuck, you know, in the issue. And the issue is, it's very important for me to communicate all my experience and education on how to put on a mask correctly. So since he was not listening to me around the issue, what I did is I got, got online and I found a video from the World Health Organization, a reputable <laughs> organization, and I forwarded it to him. So he gets it and he's like, I can't believe you. I am not interested in this. And so he wouldn't watch it. So we're going to the store and I play it. And I'm gonna listen, listen to this, listen. He turns on the radio. And I was like, oh my God, well, what's wrong with you? And he said, I am not interested in this, stop it. 
which felt very violent <laughs> at the moment, you know, because I'm like, I'm just trying to save your life. Don't you understand this, right? Well, in that moment, a few moments later, actually, what I realized is I was trying to keep him safe. But my approach was creating exactly the opposite. You know, so in, in when you were talking, Amy, and I think in couples and relationships, we get so focused on the issue, you know, the bed, like you were saying, the sandwich, the mask. And I think during these times, one of the things that we can do to really help our partnerships is to pay attention to the, our tone, right? To our feeling state. Are we, you know, are we experiencing kindness in the moment? Do we feel free and neutral or do we feel intense? But I think most of the relationship problems that we have are focused around the issues, you know, because we pay no attention at all whatsoever to the tone of our relationship. So I just wanted to, to add that, Amy, because like you were saying, I think once we get a sense of what's important, we have a willingness or it's easier for us to be more adaptable and more flexible with our, with our relationships. You know, the, the issue is not then the problem. It's not the thing to be solved. It's like just paying attention to, is your partner in a good mood in this moment? Is your partner doing the best that they can? Even if it's not like the perfect thing. So Will continues to use the mask, in my opinion, wrong, okay? And I'm like, for crying out loud, right? Like most people, they're walking around this store with a mask right here. And I was like, no, you're supposed to put it over your nose, so, you know. But is that really the point? You know, if, you, if we're starting to come together and experience a lot of resistance. So this is one of the things for the people that are just joining us, this is one of the things we're talking about being in our relationship in a vicious circle or being in our relationship with a virtu virtuous, I can't pronounce this really well, virtuous circle. Katie, would you like to pronounce that for me so just everybody gets the virtuous, virtuous circle. So, so the virtuous circle seems to focus beyond the issue. And the vicious circle, we have a tendency to focus on the issue, you know, like a duck with a bone. You cannot let it go. How can you not have a duvet on the bed? Everybody knows you have to have a duvet on the bed, right? And when we're in that, in that sense of generosity of spirit, all the little details are not our main focus. So that's one of the ways that we can start really helping ourselves to recognize what state of mind we're in or, you know, where are we in our relationship at the moment? Maria, do you want to say anything or do we have too many ladies? Uh, just figuring out how to unmute my microphone. I'm, I'm new to Zoom. Is there, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Great. I'm really sorry to join late. I just made an appointment for 7 o'clock on Saturday and uh, got mixed up. I thought this was at seven. So um, thank you for having me. Happy to have you. Yes, Hayley. <laughs> so Hayley, one of the things that we were talking about just to kind of capture it a little bit is that in relationships, well, you know what? I'm going to let Katie explain it because actually Katie is the one that came up with this awesome, awesome context. Maria, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Go ahead, or Maria can do it. I'm just going to be quiet now. Okay. So, yeah, when we were thinking through what, what is it we have to say about 
relationships and well probably not divorce right avoiding divorce uh, slightly dramatic um title but what what are the kind of what can lead us to divorce and, and what do we know about um what gets in the way of us having harmonious and enjoyable and loving relationships and experiences of our relationships and um as i was talking through my experience of of when it's not feeling wonderful it felt like i was really caught up in a vicious circle of my own thinking that was reinforcing all the stories and all the meaning that i bring to a given situation whether it's about maria being late or the fact that spanish people make the bed differently or don't make the bed at all and um, <laughs> and that, and and the meaning that i bring to that can really catch me up in in seeing my relationship through that that lens of of the problem or the issue that gabriella was talking about and that there is also a way that i experience and that we can experience our relationships that that feels really different where it's flowing and it's it's an experience of of a virtuous circle where we experience the love and we have goodwill and we don't take our um, partner's behaviors personally as if they mean something about us or they mean something about our relationship and when we're not doing that we have a very different experience of our relationship where we can act with generosity and the, the space for two people other than just me so the the idea that these these two two ways of experiencing our relationship in in a virtuous circle that we can can be in and a vicious circle that we be, can be caught up in and our awareness that we may be in one or the other um, is very helpful simply knowing which one we're in can be really helpful to us and, and we're not suggesting that we that a good relationship or is always virtuous um, because we're human beings and we'll experience both we'll come in and out of both but what's helpful when we're especially when we're in the vicious circle is um, to, to be suspicious about the truth of the problem that seems to be holding us in that vicious circle yeah, yeah or or in other words, to pay attention to our internal environment, right? Like all the stories highlighted that there was a post where the person noticed what was going on for them, mood-wise, or for the partner, and then that allowed them to start getting suspicious about what was going on and step back and listening better and have more perspective. Yeah. So Hayley and Anna Maria, welcome again, both of you. Um, I realise that you've heard snippets so far, but it would be great to hear well, from, from you and also from Amy and Karina if there's anything new coming up or if there's anything that piques your interest in what we said. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, this, I like the virtuous circle idea because it is um it is i'm finding it quite difficult with this we're in a very small um space we're in a one bed flat and we have there's kind of no door on the bedroom so we're kind of in one room and um my partner's a real like uh, introvert and he um likes to have quite a lot of time on his own generally um, and I'm usually very busy, so I'm usually only here about half the time and I'm away a lot. So um, that usually works all right. So this is a, a challenge. Um, I mean, he's in there on a, another, on a, a conference himself at the moment. Um, but you can probably hear every word I say. So even doing something like this, like there's no, there's no opportunity for privacy. <laughs> so I won't, I won't bad mouth him too much. Thanks, Hayley. Anna Maria. Hold on. First of all, thanks uh, for, for you guys having me 
uh, in this space. Uh, sorry for the delay. I was just fixing things around with my with my pet. Um, but thank you very much for for having me here. Um, I think the 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 expectations that we may have sometimes in the relationships uh, makes us think and act or behave in a way. And sometimes that is not the virtuous way or the virtuous circle. Uh, it's the vicious circle. So for me, what it's sounding uh, harder in what you're saying, it's basically that no you know it's like having those expectations so like in the top of the of the hill and you start acting or thinking what your 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 relationship should be and not what it is sense for me thanks Great, thank you. So officially we don't do have a few minutes left. Um, do you guys have time to stay like until 15 past the hour or something like that? Is that okay if we just run over a little bit? Great. Okay, good. Yeah. And also um Haley and Anna Maria, we are we're recording this and we'll probably share it. Um, but let us know if that's a problem or be aware of that in, in terms of what you're sharing throughout the call, just to let you know. Yeah, Gabriela. Okay. I was just going to say something about, you know, what Ana Maria said and what Haley was sharing. I think all of us that are in some sort of a relationship, and even if it's not a romantic relationship, we just have lots and lots of ideas, right? About what things mean. You know, like like Amy was just sharing that she would remove herself when she was in a low mood from, from her partner, right? And that can be, to somebody that doesn't know what's going on, that can be distressing because it's like, wait, you're pulling away, what's happening, right? Um, I used to have this, this idea that, no, we need to talk about it now. And I felt very urgent, let's talk about it, let's talk about it, because I just felt, if we didn't talk about it right then, we could break up or something. And so there are so many, so many, so many behaviors that we judge and so many preconceived ideas of what our partner should do. You know, like I have a very strong idea about how people should eat <laughs> and how they're behaving the table. You know, burping is one of the things that should be excluded out of the table and just excluded out of the world. But in other circles, <laughs> it's not a big deal, you know? It's just not a big deal. For me, you know, still it's a big deal and I can, feel my reaction with something just so simple as that. I think, uh, I don't know if this is the, in the whole world, but for me, it's just really, it was a big deal. The burping on the table was like, whoa, you don't do that. That's horrible. That's just like bad manners. And you, you know, you're gonna go to hell if you continue to do this and all this stuff. And so when we are under these judgments that, that we do have, everybody has, the only thing we can see about our partners and our loved ones is the bad. And so when this space starts opening up to see beyond that, it's super helpful, right? At one point, point Haley, I was just looking at you because you're in a super close space right now, right? And at one point, when I caught myself being either very reactive or judgmental, I said, you know, I really have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Because if we were in an argument, right? Just, just, it was like, let me go to the bathroom. I really have to go. And I would just kind of go in the bathroom and just, just like, <laughs> right? you know, because I, I realized I needed a moment. 
just needed a moment. Uh, and so there is this, um, there is a strength about relationships and about life. And it is, you can see your partner, you can see what you share with him or with her as a human being. You can feel love and, and kindness and uh, generosity or not. And it seems to me that we move in and out of that in relationships, you know? And I think when we move out of virtue, virtue, <laughs> it's a hard word for me, when we move out of virtue and we move into that viciousness, not on purpose, we don't do that on purpose, but when we do, when we are in the viciousness, it feels like what we are thinking is more real. It's like, oh, here we go again. See, here is the truth. I knew that I was just, you know, you know, like a, a small time of this is good, but no, this is reality. This is reality because it feels more real. Right? Because you're, you're being bathed with viciousness, literally. <laughs> right? You're just kind of like... So I think, Katie, I think that's what you were saying that for you, it's been helpful to be suspicious. I don't know if you want to talk more about that, but I found that really interesting when you were saying it. Why didn't you talk about it? Yeah, so I think in under, understanding more about what Gabrielle is saying around, um, the truth of who we are as opposed to the, the truth that sometimes feels more real that we create through our thinking or giving meaning to our partner's behaviors or moods or our own moods and critical problems arising um in understanding that beyond those vicious experiences um both we and our partner or our loved one is love and compassion and generosity, and goodwill and the capacity to listen. And knowing that, I started to get more suspicious of the, the reality created in the vicious circle. It just didn't quite ring as true and what I started to glimpse as true was who well in this case Maria is and who I am and, and as I glimpsed that was true I was able to experience that more um, and so increasingly I, that's not that I don't get completely caught up in vicious circles I <laughs> absolutely do um, but I know that when a, when a problem's born as a result of me giving meaning to uh, a behavior or a situation, um, and, and as soon as it's born, there's a problem to fix. I don't quite hook on so much to the truth of there being a problem to fix. I'm like, hang on, if, if actually beyond all of this, we are so much more we are um, beautiful humans um, then i i'm not hanging on so tightly to the story that i've created that's keeping me in the vicious circle and there's an opportunity for some space to take some space and to give some space and it can occur to me to do something helpful, like go to the toilet or um, drop, drop the viciousness. It can fall away. And knowing that that's possible, just knowing it's possible is very helpful.
Yeah, Katie, I think during these times where you are literally stuck at home, right? Like with your loved one 24 seven. Um, it's nice to know, it's nice to know that there is a possibility in the next moment to return to harmony. Even in the worst of uh, situations, you know, and Will and I have had some intense situations just with health or other stuff. And it's remarkable to me how we were moving along our relationship, you know, and we had our things, right? Like you have your things, these are, the bed should be done like this, or your mother should not be coming here every week or whatever, you know. And then when we had this opportunity to experience this intense life situation and it all the issues of the table, that was important, stop being important. Everything that matters, stop mattering. It was actually shocking to me how the only thing that I wanted was for him to be well, to be alive. And the shoes at the bottom of the stairs didn't matter. His politics didn't matter. Uh, whether he wore the mask well or not didn't matter. None of it mattered. It was, it was a moment of total appreciation. So I'm just sharing that with you because I think sometimes, I mean, I think some relationships are not meant forever, okay? I think some relationships are meant forever and I think other ones are not. So I just don't want you to think that I'm suggesting, you know, you need to work through everything because I think it's also a, it's also a reality. Some relationships are just going to be for a certain period of time. Now, that being said, it's just really, really nice to know that at any moment, we really can, can have insight that melt away all those big, huge issues and really allow us to connect to our loved one in the purest of way, you know, just with love and virtue and kindness and generosity. And I actually, I actually think it's possible to, to modify relationships or to end relationships with that, with that, that feeling. I didn't know that that was possible, but more and more as I've been around people and noticed this, like, wow, you could actually modify a relationship from, you know, like let's say romantic to friendship with a tremendous sense of kindness and love and compassion and virtue. And so it just warms my heart to know that at the center of our being lies the same thing that it's in our partner's heart. Like we share the same thing. And we just want to be happy. And then we also get in low moods like they do. And how wonderful, how wonderful to have the possibility of mm, being accepted and loved in spite of our moods and in spite of being late, right? And in spite of the bed. How wonderful that that possibility exists. When I first met Marie and Katie, I have to say this, um, because Katie hates people being late. <laughs> I did not show up. I did not show up at all. And I was like, oh my God. And then I think that happened another time. And I was like, oh my God. 
I have to say what it impressed me, impressed me tremendously, was both Katie and Maria's willingness to stay, to still collaborate with me. And I remember, I mean, remember being with them because I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe, the second time I was like, I cannot believe this, how can this happen again, you know, twice. And they was like, well, let's just move along. And I just felt, you know, I think that was one of the greatest gifts, actually. That's been, that's been a huge gift for me. In spite of the fact you don't show up, there's a willingness and a generosity of heart. So we can offer that to our partners, too, and we can offer that to ourselves. What do you think, fabulous women? You can unmute yourself if you want to. There's just one thing that the, with the word compassion triggered in me was just a reminder of when I was in my marriage, um, how I assumed that what I was experiencing was exactly what my ex-husband was experiencing. And I based all my thinking judgments on that. And then I came to see that actually, just because we're in the same situation doesn't mean that we're having the same thoughts and feelings and that also I can't second guess because I used, I used to think that I knew exactly what was going on and, and therefore took it very personally um, and so knowing that actually you know I can't assume that what's on I, I know what's going on in someone else's mind when they're in the low mood or why they're in the low mood I just think helps me to be a bit more compassionate about it and see that that love that that you know default in them that they're just in a temporary thought experience that I just don't know and can't necessarily understand. But they're reacting from that place. Um, and therefore I can love them, even though I don't understand what's going on and feel that it's unfair or whatever. Um, I think, yeah, things would have been different had I known that. <laughs> hmm. And that would be, that's a, I think it's super helpful to know with your children. Right? As well. mm. With anyone, with a friend, a close anyone, but with a worker, a co worker. Mm. Mm. That's a great point. Thank you, Karina. Anna, Maria. Um, now I have to say twice excuse me, excuse me for the having me late. <laughs> With what you have said, Gabriella, about Katie. So sorry again. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because I, get, I, I was late. I was just putting my, my notebook on my face uh, because I was feeling so bad about that. So sorry <laughs> again, Katie. <laughs> Katie's yeah. done well with it. <laughs> um, uh, when you were talking, uh, Gab, I was just thinking in three things. The first one is that fear is not a good advisor, definitely. Mm -hmm. And when you live your life with fear, especially in relationships, uh, you don't have that freedom to act um, in your spirit, right? Like having your spirit to, to be the one who talk and to feel and you can communicate different when you live your life from from the freedom of your heart so that that makes a lot of sense when you're having relationships not only with your loved ones but with anybody as, Car as karina was saying 
and yeah and that makes me think in other things like start with yourself is the key of all the relationships you cannot live for others before you have to live for you and with you like accepting you loving you so anything that you give is is from your heart not from what other things or others think they have to do or think so starting with you is the key of the relationship mm -hmm. and the third thing is um i don't know who but i heard uh like a month ago i don't remember who said that that the relationship that you live it is that you live two types of relationships one is the, the one that you live and the one other is the one that the other is living and the other is thinking and that that is that is nice to to realize because sometimes you think you're living the same relationship and definitely life is different from the point of view you're living from your reality so i think the key is to live relationships knowing that this is not about one thing this is not about one relationship this is about two human beings trying to share a space and feelings and i think that for me is it has been very helpful and not only with my husband, but with my kids and with my co-workers. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, would you like to add anything? Sorry, did you say did you say Amy? I said Amy, sorry. Amy. <laughs> I just <laughs> talking to myself. Um yeah, I think uh because Anna Maria mentioned it as well about the expectations and everything and um the relationship it's just like one aspect, isn't it, of like everything really, the relationship we have with anything um we come with a lot of ideas and uh thinking about that um so just being able to kind of stick take a well first of all just recognize that and then i think it it sometimes you think that once you've kind of read about this that you're going to like have the perfect life <laughs> but i think it takes a long well for me like it's taking a while um to put into practice like recognizing it's the first step and then the next step is uh yeah to be able to to take a step back or um yeah i don't know um yeah <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Maria, would you like to say anything at this point? Well, I wanted to thank everyone for showing up and sharing your wisdom. Uh, and also wanted to share that, you know, when this whole pandemic started, um, Gabriela, Katie and I asked ourselves, how can we contribute? And we thought about doing this type of uh, webinars twice a month. So we want to be doing this uh, during the next three months. The second 
and the last Monday of the month, right? So right at, at the same time. So if you have any topics or anything that you are interested in knowing more about, you can send us a message or an email uh, and we will be happy to explore that. Hmm. And we want it to be like a circle of, well, we want it to be like a circle of women. That's what we, we really want. <laughs> Fabulous women. <laughs> We're not going to be politically correct here. Uh, so, you know, if you also know of a friend that would like to join us, you know, mm. invite them. We are very interesting interested in uh we are very interesting yes and we're also very interested in um supporting other women in mm -hmm. the world you know we all have this affinity on that we want to support our sisters across the world and different cultures and you know with different languages and so um so we look forward to being with you again and you know mm -hmm. if there is any other women that you would like uh them to be part of this just let them know yeah and, and on that note that that means that the next one will be the 13th of april and it's 6 p.m uk time so it'd be great if you could join us we don't have a topic for it at the moment so if you do have a suggestion as gabriella said and as maria said please chip in let us know um or we'll think one up but thanks so much for thank joining thank you everyone thank you mm -hmm. ladies have a lovely rest of the day maria can you unmute everybody i yes i think i just did, did uh, thank you thank you <laughs> bye thank you bye. nice to see you all bye, bye. bye.